Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for our wonderful worship ministry. Thank you, Brother Jerome, for that reminder that the faithfulness of the Lord is great and that we trust God in every season. We trust God in every situation because his faithfulness is great to you and me. We can look back over our lives. We can think things over and remember that God has brought it, us out time and time again. Well, Happy New Year, Macedonia. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is good to be with you uh, this first Sunday of this new year, 2022. Uh, I come standing in the place of our pastor who will be back with us regularly next week. He'll be ending his sabbatical and we are virtual right now. And so I just ask that you open your hearts and open your minds to encounter God in such a special way today because God has great purpose for you in 2022. Uh, we will be virtual as well next week. And then uh, the pastor and leaders will be back with us, letting us know how we will move forward um, as we seek to manage this pandemic responsibly, but also with faith in God. Amen. Again, Happy New Year. Thank God for Minister Angelique who has led us in worship and all the ministry team that is here bringing this worship experience to you. And I thank God I have to say happy birthday to my wife. Today is her birthday. Uh, she's a New Year baby. And so, Denise, I love you and I thank you and uh, I look forward to celebrating later. As I said, brothers and sisters, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Come on, touch your neighbor on the other side of the couch and say, there is a word from the Lord. The word of the Lord, Brother Al, comes from Psalm 27. Psalm chapter 27, verses 13 and 14. Psalm 27, verse 13 and 14. And at verse 13, you find God's word and it reads, I would have lost heart unless... I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The rugged language of the King James says, I would have fainted had I not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14 says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And this first Sunday of this year, 2022, Macedonia, I want to talk to you from this subject. I still believe in the goodness of God. I still believe in the goodness of God. Will you pray with me? Lord, please allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be acceptable in your sight. And I pray in this moment as we prepare our hearts for this new year, Lord God, as many of us may even still feel there's no way out, we receive the encouragement that our pastor gave us on watch night. And now, Lord God, we seek to move further into that reality that you are a way maker. And so, Lord God, I ask that you would give us ears to hear your word, hearts to love your word, and the will to do your word when we leave this time together. This we pray in the strong name of Jesus and everyone who loved him said amen and amen. I still believe in the goodness of God. Macedonia, the 369th Infantry Regiment, which became known as the Harlem Hellfighters, was an all African American unit in World War I. Aside from seeing more combat than all other U.S. outfits and having a world-famous ragtime band, the Hellfighters were all, was also the home of Private Henry Johnson. Johnson, who President Theodore Roosevelt described as one of the five bravest Americans who served in the war. Single-handedly, Johnson fought off more than 20 Germans and saved a fellow soldier from capture all while injured and armed with only a bolo knife. These courageous actions earned Johnson the nickname Black Death from the German Army. Well, as 
well as, and don't judge me, any of you who speak French, he also won the French Croix du Guerre, France's highest military honor. After the war, Johnson returned home to a welcoming parade in his native New York City and was posthumously awarded the U.S. Medal of Honor by President Barack Obama in 2015. I wonder, friends, why Henry did not give up and accept his defeat. I wonder why Henry did not give up and become a political prisoner. I wonder how this man surrounded by enemies could make it back to New York and fight his way to a medal, a, a medal of freedom in 2015. Did he believe somewhere deep inside that he still had brighter days ahead? That though he was surrounded by death, it was not his time to die? Did he have faith in God that caused him to fight like hell, I mean fight like heaven, so that he would not surrender to defeat under the attack of the enemy? Did Henry, like the psalmist, believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? I lift this story today, Massey, as we celebrate the start of a brand new year, 2022, because there is a possibility that there is someone under the sound of my voice that may feel like giving up and wavering and waving the white flag of surrender in life because you are surrounded by the enemy of despair surrounded by the enemy of disappointment, surrounded by the enemy of depression, surrounded by the enemy of discouragement and devastation. Some of us today may be fighting like this Harlem hell fighter so that you don't become overcome by the difficulties of losing loved ones in the middle of a pandemic, depressed from dealing with the unresolved scenarios that life dishes out and the frustration of trying to move forward into a future while it appears that the world might be closing back down. Today, brothers and sisters, today, Macedonia, I want to talk to someone who is struggling on today to make the pieces of life's puzzle fit together. For this is essentially how David describes the circumstances in his life in Psalm 27. <clears throat> he is surrounded by enemies. They are spreading falsehood about him. His life is at risk. And maybe he is being chased by Saul to keep him from becoming the king of Israel. Maybe he is being chased by his son Absalom to steal the crown from King David. The context is not quite clear, but to say the least, David is in a time of trouble. Have you been there? He should be paralyzed by anxiety. He should be about to give up. He should be getting ready to throw in the towel. Yet David decided to continue to fight the fight of life and fight the fight of faith like the Harlem hell fighters when he writes these words. I would have fainted had I not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. David says, I would have lost my mind. David says, I should have been put in the psychiatric hospital. David says, my enemies would have overtaken me had I not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, Alvin, he's not talking about sweet, the sweet by and by in heaven and in the world to come. No, David believes, Macedonia, that he's going to see the goodness of the Lord in his own hometown. He's going to see the goodness of the Lord in 2022. And I just came back to day family to remind you that though the start of this new year might feel uncertain, if you keep your faith in the goodness of God, something good is going to happen to you in 2022. Even though the difficulty of this moment may be surrounding you like an attack from an enemy army, you can make it through this year and as more than a conqueror if you believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The first truth I see in the text about believing in the goodness of God, Macedonia, is this. Number one, you've got to remember your covenant with God. Come on, touch your neighbor on the other side of the coffee table and say, remember your covenant with God. 
Now, this is not blind optimism that allows David to find hope in the midst of troubling times. No, David doesn't just have a positive outlook on life and his troubles because, he, uh, because of the naivety of his worldview. In fact, David may still have to fight some battles, church, to get out of this situation he is in when he writes this song. But David's life as the chosen king of Israel, as the apple of God's eye, as a man after God's own heart, is based upon the covenant of God established with David. David's life is built on his relationship with God as the representative of, God's, of God to the people of Israel. You see, the king is to lead the people of God in the direction that God wants his people to be led. David as the king is like God's son in the midst of Israel. And just remember when David came to the scene, on the scene of salvation history, God sent Samuel the prophet to the house of Jesse in order to find the next king of Israel to replace Saul. And Jesse brought all his sons before Samuel to see if they were to be God's chosen king. But the oil of anointing would not flow out of the jar because David did not yet come into the room. Samuel asked Jesse, do you have any other sons? And then Jesse scratched his head and remembered that he had forgotten David out in the fields tending to the sheep. But when David came in, in, friends, to the room, the oil began to flow because God had chosen David. God established his covenant with David. God anointed and God appointed David to be king. Therefore, David's confidence in God was based upon God's intentional activity and commitment to be with David as his anointed instrument to be the king of Israel. David, my brothers and sisters, in today's text, is confident in the face of his enemies, not because his enemies are lightweight adversaries, but because David holds the trump card because God made a promise to be with David, to fight for David in the time of trouble. Come on, one more time, touch your neighbor and tell them God is fighting for you. God is fighting for you, friends, as he fought with David. And that is why when David sees Goliath of Gath intimidating the armies of Israel, he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who stands against the armies of the Lord? Who is this fool talking crazy to y'all, Israel? He does not have a covenant, let the church say covenant, with the greatest power in the universe. David, friends, can talk big to Goliath because David is walking in the arena with God. David knew he had help from God because he had a covenant with God. So he had confidence in the face of the giants of his life. Brothers and sisters, I grew up watching WWF wrestling. I got any, I got any WWF fans, WWE fans. I grew up watching WWF uh, wrestling tone at my Nana's house, at my grandma's house with all my uncles. And we watched uh, Jimmy, Superfly, Snooker, Andre, The Giant, Hulk, Hogan, Randy, Macho Man, Savage. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> and there would come a time in the tag team matches when one wrestler would be getting beat down so bad that he almost give up but he would struggle his way to the other side of the ring under a barrage of assault by his opponents because it was a tag team match. Let the church say tag team. And if he could just tag in his partner who, just, who, who was just waiting to get into the ring to do battle for the title, their team still had a chance to win the fight. So even though he was being beat down, he doesn't faint because he knows his help is on the way. Come on, stick with me today, friends. Family, here's why you can't give up because in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, Jesus promises his disciples that he would be with them to the very end of the age. And that is that those of us who have a covenant with God based upon faith in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, Jesus promises to be with us in all the troubles 
and all the triumphs of life. Jesus is our tag team partner so that no matter what type of trouble we are in, we can just tag the Lord in prayer and he will do battle on our behalf, Macedonia. That's why you can't give up in 2022 because God's got more living for you in 2022. Stop living in the shadow, I want to say today, friends, of 2020 and 2021. It's a new day. 2020 and 2021 were real, but God has brought you through them and God is, has more living for you in 2022. The pandemic has caused us pain, but there is healing for your sorrow, Richard Smallworth. There is healing for your pain. There's healing for your spirit. There's shelter from the rain. Lord, send your healing for this. We know there is a bomb in Gilead to heal your soul because God is with you you've got more battles to win macedonia you've got more miracles to see you've got more victories to have be won you've got more children and grandchildren to raise in the knowledge of christ you've got a community to serve you've got a church to see go to the next level here's why you can't give up because god's got something good waiting for you in 2022 the great reformer of the church, Martin Luther, penned these words in the message of this point of the text in his hymn, great hymn, the, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Did we in our own strength confide? Our striving would be losing. We're not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. Dost ask who that may be? Christ Jesus, it is he, the Lord of host his name from age to age the same, and he must win the battle. I just came to tell someone, stop trusting in your own strength for the battle this year is not yours, it's the Lord's. Brothers and sisters, we've got to remember our covenant with God if we're going to believe in the goodness of God this year. But the second truth I see in the text is this, you've got more fight in you. You've got more fight in you. We must remember this is, Angelique, not some weak, insecure, cowardly David writing this text. Yes, David is a worshiper, but David, this is also a warrior. God did not let David build the temple of God, but bequeathed that responsibility to David's son Solomon Massey because David had too much blood on his hands. But David's strength comes out of the communion and intimacy he had with God in seasons of tranquility and seasons of difficulty. It was David's communion with God that gave him strength to face his enemies. So as he waits on the Lord, he has to remind himself to be of good courage for it is God who will strengthen his heart. There seems to be a synergy in the text between David's faith and David's worship of God in Psalm 27 that, that as David goes to worship, he is able to gain internal control of his emotional and mental instability, stick with me, in order to address the trying troubles of his life situation. When David goes to worship, he's able to seize control of that which is frantic and chaotic in his mind and in his heart in order that he might address the real circumstances of his life. This is seen in verse four when David is surrounded by enemies. He goes into the place of God in war, the presence of God in worship when he writes, one thing have I asked of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. It is, friends, in worship, David is reminded who God is and therein is reminded of who God has made David to be. As in 1 Samuel 30, the Amalekites, David's enemies, stole all the women and the children from David's camp while he was away. And things were going downhill for David. The text says... And David was greatly distressed. Have you been there? For the people spoke of stoning him. The people turned their backs on David because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his son and for his daughter. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. 
And David said to Abithar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the, hither the ephah. And Abithar brought thither the ephah to David. And David acquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall we go get our wives and our women and our children back from the enemy? Shall I overtake them, David says. And he answered him, the Lord answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them without fail, recover all. Brothers and sisters, David had all types of situations. His enemies were conquering him. His people were turned on him. He had lost the women and the children and he encouraged himself in the Lord to get the strength to go out and fight the next battle. Friends, my eldest son, Uriah, is pretty good at soccer, but he always gets hurt in every game. Andre, he might score three goals in one game, but he always gets kicked or hit with the ball or trips and falls. And my wife and my mother, they get mad at me. They get after me because all I say is get up and shake it off. Because here it is, I don't want him, Brother Al, to use a little bit of pain as an excuse to stop fighting and stop competing in the game of life. I don't want him to be a man who quits on life just because he's got a little struggle in his experience. I want him to be able to dig deep and encourage himself to play at the next level even when he feels like giving up because of life's pain. Friends, David got in prayer and praise and finds out sometimes you've got to encourage yourself in the Lord. You can't wait for your mama. You can't wait for your boo. You can't wait for your best friend. You've got to encourage yourself because of who you already know God to be. And I just came to tell someone, Macedonia, in this new year, this is not the time to get depressed. This is not the time to go get high and get drunk. This is not the time to faint and give up on life. This is not the time to get, this is the time to get into worship and prayer and recognize that God put more fight in you God put more strength in you God put more ability to stand against the struggle in you God did not make you a quitter he's made you a winner in Christ Jesus family will leave you family life will leave you in a place where that which is most dear to you is robbed from you and you will feel as though you cannot go on you have lost your hope for living. But it is in the presence of the Most High God, the giver of life, that you will find the answers you need for the times of trouble and despair. And when you seek God, Macedonia, he will show you yourself and his mission on your life. And you will find that you've still got fight left in you. I know you've had some hits these last couple of years, but you still got some fight left in you. You've still got love left in you. You've still got hope left in you. And there is some stuff that Satan and this world have stolen over the past two years that you've got to go and take it back. Come on, tell your neighbor there's something still worth fighting for. Come on, tell your neighbor your family is still worth fighting for your anointing is still worth fighting for your church is still worth fighting for your destiny is still worth fighting for your integrity is still worth fighting for your purity is still worth fighting your financial peace is still worth fighting for your relationship with God is still worth fighting for yes, so you've got to recognize not only that you have a tag team partner who will come in and save your day when you're going down, but you've got to recognize that you serve a God who not only fights for you, but who puts some fight in you. I still believe in the goodness of God. Third truth I see in the text to encourage your heart this year that God has still got something good waiting on you is this Macedonia. Not only do you have to remember the covenant, not only... Do you have to remember that you've got some fight inside, but you've got to just learn to wait on the Lord? Yeah, I'm done, family. May the Lord God bless you world good. But the sweet psalmist of Israel, David, twice encouraged us at the end of this psalm with, these, with this simple phrase, wait on the Lord. And I mean, it's just that simple. 
David wants you, even though life will take you through some hellish experience, to live with an anticipation for God's unique ability to produce a comeback in your life. He wants you to learn to wait for the Lord. I had a preacher I used to listen to in my childhood, Alvin, who used to say the atmosphere of expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles. Really, when you expect God to show up, God will show up and do what you never expected him to do. David, friends, has grown accustomed to God surprising him in his life. When something goes wrong in David's experience, God uses the wrong to make it right for David. David can't always explain it. He definitely doesn't always deserve it. David can't always tell you what God is doing, going to do, but he has grown accustomed. Let the church say accustomed to God turning his calamity, his confusion, his troubles, his sin, do I have a witness? His failure, do I have a witness? And his darkest moments into victory. That is why David says in verse one of Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? brothers and sisters David has some swag in his faith in God David expects God to turn his trouble around and that is why he is willing to wait on the Lord uh, simply put David's daddy wouldn't choose him but God chose him to be king and that's why he knows how to wait on the Lord David's brothers told him he had no place on the battlefield, but God chose him to defeat the giant Goliath. And that's why David is willing in this trouble to wait on the Lord. The women sing, Saul has slain his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. And because Saul was so insecure, he tried to kill David over those words. And God provides two occasions where David could have taken the life of Saul with no problem, but, God, but David didn't kill Saul and waited for God to give him the kingdom. And so in this circumstance, when he pins this psalm, he doesn't mind waiting on the Lord. David lost his first child with Bathsheba because of his own sin and lust, but God provides them a second son named Solomon to build the temple of worship to God. And David, in this circumstance, doesn't mind waiting on the Lord. David's descendants, Alvin, are tore up from the floor up. The kings of Israel are no good, but God promises David that he would send him a grandson to reign on the throne of Israel. And God gave David Jesus to be the son of David, the king king of kings the lord of lords david doesn't mind therefore waiting on the lord for when the fullness of time had come god sent forth his son born of a woman born under the law and david got used to god turning his troubles into victory so he doesn't friends mind waiting on the lord in whatever circumstance he finds himself in isn't that the promise to the believer in Romans 8, 28, and 29? And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Brothers and sisters, I'm out of your way, but I just came to tell you, family, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Abraham had to wait till he was a senior saint to have the son that God God promised him and that's why I don't mind waiting on the Lord Noah had to wait for years before the flood came and that's why I don't mind waiting on the Lord in 2022 Moses had to wait while taking a long walk through the wilderness and that's why I don't mind waiting on the Lord the prophets had to wait in the midst of a rebellious people for the Savior and that's why I don't mind waiting on the Lord the old preacher would say Jesus had to wait all day Friday he waited all day Saturday but early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands and some of you have waited on through sickness and waited through broken hearts and waited through frustration but God turned your mourning into dancing your sorrow into joy he traded ashes for your beauty and that is why he traded beauty for your ashes and that is why you don't mind this year waiting on the 
Lord. Is there anybody out there in virtual space who can say this year, I don't mind waiting on the Lord because if he did it before, he can do it again. If he turned it around last year, he can turn it around this year. If he gave me the strength before, he can give me the strength right now. Brothers and sisters, we have a God who is so good that he never disappoints and always comes through for those who are waiting on him. We have to wait. We have had to wait for the past two years in the midst of this pandemic. But instead of waiting on politicians and physicians and the CDC and the WHO and everybody else, why don't we try this year waiting on the Lord? Yes, we want all the information we can get. Yes, we want to be responsible. Yes, we want to be wise. But we also want to be people of prayer to hear the voice of God for how we deal with this global pandemic in, a per, in our personal experience and in our collective community here at the church. So today, brothers and sisters, we say with David, we would have fainted had we not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I challenge you today, friends, to trust him afresh, to trust him anew, and to say, God, this year I'm not going to go in with a downcast spirit, defeated before I even get started. But God, I choose to believe that something good is going to happen to me this year that you make a way out of no way, that you prepare my path before me, that you already know what you've destined for me in this year. And because I am your child, I am like David. I am the apple of your eye. I've got a covenant with you. So you're committed to fight for me. But you're not only fighting for me, you're a God who makes me like yourself. So I walk by faith and not by sight. I use my uh, my, my knowledge of who Christ is to prepare me for this year that I know nothing about. But I know who holds my future and it's the same God who holds my hand. It is God who's Emmanuel, God with us. And I serve such a good God that when I can't trace him, I still trust him. So I don't mind waiting on him. Some of you need to wait for that relationship don't, don't, don't date the first person who comes by this year. Wait for the one God will send. Some of you need to wait for God to open the door for that new position, that new opportunity for employment. Some of you need to wait for God to provide all the resources instead of you deciding to take it all in your hand. And that's not inactivity. That is that trusting that I'm not going to move until God says move. I want to encourage you this year to still believe in the goodness of God. The difficulty we've seen is real, but our God is greater. Our God is more real. Our God is greater than the difficulty. So if you are out there and you are being touched by this word and you say you know what I know that I don't have a covenant with God I'm not in right relationship with God I've not accepted Jesus as his son and my savior and I want to put my faith and my trust in him to have eternal life and peace with God and abundant life lived with God in this world until Christ returns will you please call our church reach out look at our get connected page and someone will reach out to you let you know more about what it means to have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, what it means to become a member of Macedonia Church of Pittsburgh. And there's some, maybe someone, if you may need prayer, please also call that number you see on the screen. We have prayer partners who are there to minister to you. Brothers and sisters, we thank God for his word. We thank God for your life this year. Will you pray with me? Lord, I thank you for my brothers and my sisters in Macedonia Church and those who are visiting with us virtually today. I ask, Lord, that you would touch their hearts, that you would minister to them, that you would raise their outlook on life this year, and that they would know that you've got more in store than they could ever think, dream, or imagine. So, Lord God, we trust you today, and we look to you today. 
believing to see the goodness of the Lord in 2022. Restore, Lord God, what has been lost and bring about, Lord God, what we never could have dreamed for. This we pray in the strong name of Jesus and everyone who loved them said amen and amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters.
how you feel in the midst of it. Trust me, I feel you. I'm with you. But every time the enemy raises up against you, just remind yourself that God's goodness is literally chasing you down. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, all that they're chasing you down. And so you remind yourself that his goodness is running after you. We love you. We thank you for joining us. God bless you.